Foot Clan, we got another great show for you today to get you ready for your draft. We've got not just the bust picks. Oh, cover your eyes. Also the values. Don't miss today's show. Make sure you subscribe. Click the bell. Enjoy. Foot Clan, we're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, are we not? Mm-hmm. Well, I got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot at managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. It's an age-old story. Of course. If you like a show with big laughs and a lot of heart, then this is the one you've been looking for. Watch Ted Lasso right now on the Apple TV app. Subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. The time is coming swiftly. The middle rounds are now close for the unskilled. Yet here you are, unprepared, you fools. This season you'll find all kinds of foes, eager to watch your draft crumble with wasted picks. There can only be one ultimate draft kit. Only one that can bend them to its will. And it does not share power. You must wield the UDK and send your opponents back to the shadows. You shall not pass. On this chance to send your league mates into the deep, fly, you fools, to ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, August 27th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Wright, is here. I am here. I cannot believe with his schedule. Yes. Our good friend? That Gandalf. <laughs> I mean, Gandalf's pretty busy. Yes. Like, you, you know is he things? the local wizard? Oh, he, oh, <laughs> is he? He might be someone's local wizard. How dare you insult him and call him a local wizard? <laughs> He's, he's the world's wizard. He's more of a national. <laughs> At he's least a, regional. I mean, <laughs> Jay, come on, man. Jason he's, Moore is here. He's got magic. I am hyped. I'm excited for this show. It's going to be a good one. We have busts and values on today's episode of the podcast. And you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The community is jointhefoot.com. You can get in on the Megalobowl. You can find some Foot Clan leagues. You get an extra episode every week. Jointhefoot.com. And uh, as our good friend Gandalf <laughs> reminded you, uh, ultimatedraftkit.com, if you want all the tiered rankings, if you want all of the sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values, uh, consistency charts, 100-plus player profile videos, sometimes people message me on Twitter and they say, my draft is tomorrow. Do I have time to really get up to speed with the Ultimate Draft Kit? And um, I think the answer is yes, because not only do you have time to cram, but there are tools for the active draft. Mm -hmm. You have the app and you can mark players as drafted. You have the printable cheat sheets that you can bring and give you an advantage at the draft. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I mean, it's it's nice to get early where you can do the prep and look at all of the stuff. But the truth is, if your draft is about two minutes from now, that's when <laughs> that's when you're going to use it the most is. You know, look at the tiers, look at the rankings, the the cheat sheet. That's my number one tool. So this weekend should be the biggest draft weekend of the year. It's possible. It's, it is. Um, what else is going on? You guys doing all right today? Yeah, I'm Hold, doing great. I yeah, think holding I, up. I think we're going to have a fun show. That is show. the best you can do in 2020. Yeah, hold on. Just hold on. Oh, just hold on. I went, uh, we've been very busy. A lot of these days, we have multiple shows, uh, like today. We're on Sirius XM later this afternoon. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time for chores around the house, and it's been very, dare I say, warm in Arizona. Oh, that's fair. 
I walked around my backyard last night. Nude. No, no, no. I have my clothes on, Mike. <laughs> but thank you for adding some <laughs> flavor to I'm that not- story. <laughs> <laughs> really but, seals it in <laughs> but i'm telling you like like at least a quarter of the plants in my yard are just dead oh, they yeah. just they gave up they let go <laughs> i have a tree in my front yard that's just like i'm out of here i mean they're just crumbling into i mean this is like the scene from what is it terminator <laughs> where it oh the, the yeah, blows yeah. through the she fence has the dream Oh, yeah. Oof. I mean, it's over. They gave up. Like, we were supposed to get rain. We've had 34 days so far this year with over 110 degrees. Mm. That- How do you know stats about that? <laughs> Google. <laughs> you were just Googling them now? It is on my screen. Okay. Is, I'm following. I'm adding to just, your story, Andy. It's a weather calendar. Professional over here. There are just plants that are have given up on any rain anymore. So, um, But I thought it was like a little bit of a metaphor for how 2020 is we're just holding on the plants in the backyard are holding on hold we do have a season and how how many days away is the season now brooks i think we're two weeks two weeks away Mm. Mm. let's talk news news and notes from around the league all right just after the show released yesterday we had the startling news that David Montgomery was out for the season. Oh, man, it was it was rough. That's how it seemed. A day after I forgave him for last year. Yeah, Reaper. Uh, non-contact injury carted off. That was the initial thing said. And then it wasn't quite so true. He was able to limp off and then taken. Uh, back on the cart, and then it comes out that it was not his knee as it was uh, first reported. Ah, ah, my groin! Uh, he he hurt his groin, and thankfully, it does not appear to be a super long term injury. He's not going to miss this season. In fact, right now it's being reported two to four weeks. You ever hurt your groin? I have not. I have hurt a groin. It yeah. is unpleasant. Yeah, uncomfortable. I think we have the audio from when that <laughs> happened. Ah, yep, there it is. My groin. Two to four weeks. <laughs> he does have a chance of being available for the opener against the Lions. We will. We thought about like what kind of analysis. We want to bring something to the table here, but we're still kind of learning what they're going to be doing depth chart wise. They don't have anything traditional behind David Montgomery in the running back room. You have Tariq Cohen, and that is the instant kind of fantasy football reaction. Sure. Is, but but the truth is, is Tariq Cohen has not been a very good runner for... Uh, well, he's, he's a satellite back. He's an exactly. undersized guy. He's like It's like Darren Sproles. Yeah, he'll get some carries, but you can't give Tariq Cohen 200 carries. Someone else has to step into that role. And uh, right now, it seems like that's going to be Cordero Patterson, who... It was a wide receiver and is now converting to running back, but he's had great success in in the rushing game. Will they add a veteran? I th- I would put the probability as they will add somebody. Now, what happens with David Montgomery in the draft? We I'm citing that David Montgomery is going to be out for up to four weeks. On top of that, you have the you have risk of re injury here if he comes back too quickly just throughout the season. It is something you're going to have to worry about. So, do you take the draft dip because he's not going to? He won't be a fourth round pick anymore. A guy, if you're not, you don't even sure he's going to be ready for week one. He's going to drop down to what? What would you guess? Round six? Eight? Oh, I was going to say maybe even eight. If he has a chance for being available at the opener, look, today's show is values. I had a paragraph and a half written up on David Montgomery. He was my value pick coming into the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, He is not my value pick today. But when you have a player that has a high probability of 275 plus touches in an offense, has a chance of being back in week one, and you can get that in the sixth, seventh, eighth, round so you're 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 gonna buy the injury dip i i would consider it yeah i mean because he could be back in week one and get 275 carries this year and that is a price that you know who are you grabbing in that realm right are are you going to take carry on johnson in your draft ahead of david montgomery right now 
Uh, that's that's a, a good name to throw out there because obviously one is the presumed starter and one is the presumed 50-50 guy in a backfield. And, and you know, the thing with me is I, I have not been in on, on David Montgomery. I, I just think his ceiling is basically a repeat of what we saw last year with, you know, an extra touchdown or two. That being said, if he does drop into the eighth, ninth round where – I'm not relying on him as a starter at all. I'm just grabbing a guy for my bench. I don't think that you Ooh, know. I've got a good I don't question. think you're going to find a better bench guy for depth. Uh, you know that that's, in that part fair. of the draft. Let, here's a great question for you: Are you taking David Montgomery if you drafted today over Tariq Cohen? Oh, that is a good question. Because uh, that realm of carry on Johnson, there's James White, there's Sony Michelle, there's Philip Lindsay, there's Tariq Cohen in that in that range. Because of where that is in in the the range of roster construction, I would probably take David Montgomery. I'm not relying uh, in, unless I'm going zero RB. If I'm going zero RB, then I'm gonna take the the pass catching higher upside. I'm gonna need this guy to start for my team. This might be one of my first two running backs I'm selecting. In which case, I'd go Tariq Cohen. Otherwise, the way that I construct my roster, I would I would be taking David Montgomery in that range. All right, uh, we'll keep you up to date on whether the Bears add another body. They have Ryan Nall as well with his career of two carries for eight yards mm, on, the depth, it. on the depth chart. All right, Joe Mixon has not been at practice. Uh, the report this morning was that it's due to migraines. Now, Melvin Ingram on Hard Knocks has set a precedent for what we might start seeing, which is the hold in, not the hold out. And you've had doubts about Dalvin Cook coming to the surface. Oh, is Dalvin right. Cook... You know, Adam Schefter came out and talked about, oh, if he doesn't have a new contract, I'd be worried about Dalvin Cook. Joe Mixon, another player that's been pining for a new contract. Some concerns about a hold in, but now this report of migraines. So do you believe that? I mean, is this a situation that you're just monitoring? You you can't really make any distinct call on whether he has migraines, whether he is you know, doing this as you know, a contract. Uh, negotiation, you know, piece. Uh, what you do need to be aware of is that he is in a contract year, does want to have a bigger contract, and there's at least some risk uh, of that boiling over. I don't expect him to miss any games, but you know, when you're on the clock and you're drafting uh, in that round, in that range, and you're looking at Joe Mixon or someone else. You at least need to be aware of it when you make your decision. Now, Andy, he's one of your my guys. Is, is, does it give you any pause when you're on the clock? You know, we just had our family league, right? And you went back to back my guys with Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon. Is there any chance you would not have taken Joe Mixon if this was a important league to you that was starting today with these conversation pieces? Until the migraine... Um, report from NFL Network came through this morning. It terrified me like the fires of Mordor. <laughs> mm. hey, I mean, it's uh. you, it's not something you want to hear. I was going to ask you the question. Do you think he will consider, you know, um, me in this whole equation? That's My, true. The way I went out on a limb for Joe Mixon. Do you think that I will be part of the bridge to a new contract? Thoughts? I From Cincinnati? Like... We, yeah, like, we weren't going to do it, and then right. we heard the confidence. Well, the from, my guy thing, and I'm not taking him back again. So, <laughs> yeah, I think you, I think you are the glue in this situation here, Andy. So you, you should give confidence to draft him. It's not a good Reaper day for me. No, well, David or Montgomery you could argue and, it's a really good Reaper okay, day for okay, you. For, <laughs> it really is just a matter of perspective. Tomato, tomato situation. Oh, that's a strong point. I don't think Joe Mixon's going to miss games. Yeah. Oh, that's good, Mike. Thank you. Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll said uh, he he had seen Adam Gase talking about Frank Gore, mm. and he said, "I can I can do that." I <laughs> uh, Pete Carroll says Carlos Hyde will quote be a big factor for us. Yeah. Unquote. I've I've heard Pete Carroll talk about his players before, and <laughs> here's what they are: they're incredible. They are in great shape. They're ahead of schedule. They're going to be a a, a a giant piece of every play. Yeah, but it, 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 ahead of schedule. So that's a comment in the favor of Chris Carson. 
But then Carlos Hyde in a big factor, being a big back factor for us is against Chris Carson. So do they cancel out? All Pete Carroll comments cancel each other out. All of them. Yes. <laughs> you just there's certain coaches you just here's here's the actual truth. When Pete Carroll says something negative about a player, that's mm. when the alarm yeah, that's when you go, oh, okay, this, all that's right. a problem. Dif I, different angle though. Two hundred and sixty one opportunities for Carlos Hyde last year. Here's the thing though. It a big opportunity to me is he will be on the field. He Carlos Hyde's going to get touches because Rashad Penny was a factor as well. Now, for fantasy purposes, you're, Carlos Hyde's going to have 10 opportunities a week, which is more a thorn in the butt cheeks if you are rostering Chris Carson and, and not so much a you could play Carlos Hyde unless he happens to get you know the 10 carries for 40 yards and the touchdown. And then, so I'm not drafting Carlos Hyde, but he is, he's the backup. He, he is the, the backup. If you are trying to, you know, to make if, sure, had, if you want to lock up the entire Seattle backfield, which I don't just, but maybe someone <laughs> out there does it's, it's going to be Carlos Hyde. This, this to me is more of a indictment of Rashad Penny is, is not ready to go. And we don't know when he's going to be ready to go. We, <clears throat> I don't know if we've considered it. We need a thorn in the butt cheeks episode. <laughs> okay, yeah. Because there are, I mean, there are a number of players yeah. that exist only to bring you pain. Yeah, they're not going to provide anything good for your fantasy, but they're going to ruin. I mean, it's that's one of the why, reasons I wore clothes a, in the backyard to avoid the, 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 the thorn in the butt cheeks. Mm. Yeah, you don't want that. Uh, you, you ever backed into a rose garden? Oh, <laughs> back, <laughs> back. <laughs> Growing. <laughs> oh, this show's oh. going great. <laughs> Let's compound that. Uh, Jordan Love has, quote, yet to provide even a glimpse of why the Packers traded up to him. That is the camp report from the Athletics, Matt Schneiderman. Now, here's the thing. Uh, quarterbacks. Accuracy issues. Quarterbacks. This, this quote was actually from Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that would be great. <laughs> quarterbacks take a long like, hey, time. Matt, print it. <laughs> You know, to to develop in certain situations, and and the glimpse for why they drafted him could be, um, you know, down the road, a year or two down the road. But why they traded up to draft a guy no one was clamoring for makes no sense. I guess I could have saved that piece of news for once we start the bus segment. Maybe, maybe okay. we'll maybe we'll give it a year or two. Yeah, but give us some time. initial reports. Aaron Rodgers not being uh, threatened by Jordan Love's, Love's uh, progress. All right. That is it for news and notes, unless Brooks has something for us. Brooks, do you have anything breaking? Nope. This is the time of year. You got to pay attention to that, even while yep. we're recording. So we'll, we've got a breaking news drop. We're, 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 equi we're equipped. Yep. All right. We're going to talk about busts and values. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Navy Federal Credit Union. If you're looking for ways to save more each month, look no further. They offer their members great ways to lower their interest rates and save more. Uh, one easy option is transferring your credit card balance to a Navy Federal Platinum credit card and saving with a low intro APR. That's a smart thing that you can do. Uh, members save more when they refinance with Navy Federal. Another great way to save is by refinancing that auto loan from another lender and then moving it over to Navy Federal. Plus, when you refi your auto loan, uh, you get a $200 bonus. Terms and conditions apply. It's easy to apply either online or with the mobile app. And Navy Federal members are the mission. Visit NavyFederal.org to learn more. They're insured by NCUA credit and collateral subject to approval. Refinance loan must be at least $5,000 to be eligible for the $200 bonus. Message and data rates may apply. Visit NavyFederal.org for more information. And ladies and gentlemen, fantasy football time means that you need to get your fantasy football hardware. You got to get the trophies. You got to get the rings. Well, guess what? You can get both of those right now and save quite a bit of quiche. FantasyChamps.com. That is our go-to source for uh, for the hardware so that we can make sure everyone else knows that they are a loser and we are the fantasy champs. And right now, if you buy a trophy or a belt, you can get a free $59 championship ring. It, look, 
you want the ring, you want the trophy, you can't decide, why not get both? Use the code FREERING. If you buy a trophy or a belt, get that free $59 championship ring. Fantasychamps.com. Use the code FREERING. You guys ready to talk some busts? Oh, uh, I think so. Bus. All right, busts and values on today's show. We had an early bust episode back in June. I'm going to bring those names up again, see if you are still on board, and then we'll bring you a new name today. Uh, Mike, back in the middle of June, you said, Stefan Dix, you think he could be a bust for fantasy football players. Are you still on board with that take? I am still on board with the 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 take that Stefan Diggs is going to be he will still be hot and cold. I think Eve will be even more extreme with Josh Allen instead of Kirk Cousins. The the the, the where he's being drafted has altered me me saying, you know, just banging the table saying I'm never drafting Stefan Diggs, but he is a guy that You're just avoiding. As I as much as I love Stephon Diggs, I don't want to draft him on my fantasy team this year. All right, uh, Jason, you know, part of this show, we say we're staying water. Yeah, mm-hmm. Jason. Mm-hmm. And we don't just bring you the analytical, we bring you the holistic view. You said Austin Eckler in the middle of June was a uh, – now, is that Awesome Eckler or Austin Excellent? I don't I don't remember which Why one. Not? Awesome <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> awesome Excellent. He's just superlatives. <laughs> Uh, But are you still on board with Eckler being a potential bust for fantasy football players? So when I said that he was being drafted as uh, a running back one in June, uh, he was near that, you know, early second round pick. He's dropped quite a bit. By Mike or by other people? No, by ADP. But he's he's dropped quite a bit. Um, And now he's, uh, according to what I'm looking at, the 24th player off the board. He's at that 2-3 turn. Oh, man. I have a hard time. That's delightful. I, I would not label him a bust there. I do. My point in that was that I think you're going to see a, a major downturn in his receptions, and that's where his real fantasy value came from. I stick to that. But if if he's being drafted outside the top twelve running backs, he should he should return on that. So he, in essence, should not avoid P River because that provided him. With the volume in the passing game. Oh, yeah. If you're a pass-catching running back, that's a delightful Get your trunks. Uh, (laughs) We will talk about that later. I brought up Tyler Boyd at the time in June. I have no different feelings about Tyler Boyd. Okay. Uh, There's just a lot of pass-catching options there. AJ Green, mercifully, back at practice. T. Higgins showing out. You've got John Ross involved. Tyler Boyd's very reliable. I just don't get excited about um, him in drafts. I haven't really... I know I haven't taken him anywhere, so mm. just kind of meh, meh on Tyler Boyd. Mm-hmm. I think he's a reliable number two receiver. Yeah, I mean the the reality not on your is, fantasy team, like a not, right number two on an NFL team. Yeah, the reality is he had so many targets last year and was okay. I mean, if that's his, you know, if he's just okay when you have that level of volume, and now the volume goes away, he's not someone I'm excited to have. I I wouldn't imagine drafting. All right, I'm going to let Jason kick off our bust picks on today's show because his is a perfect transition from the news. There there has been a lot of talk in Jets camp, so I'll let you have the floor. All right, my bust candidate for 2020 is Le'Veon Bell. And last year he was the running back 17, which was you know in and of itself a bust from where he was being drafted, but nowhere to go but up, right? Lat- lateral yeah i th- i think and we- down you I- can go down just nowhere to go <laughs> i think we have a number two problem Oof. number two but here's the thing i'm not just talking about mr b-hole adam gase i'm talking about the number two running back on the team is a problem last year blau powell blau pow, was the number two running back in carries he had 59 total carries on the season but wait Powell had 19 carries in week 14 when Le'Veon Bell wasn't there so when Le'Veon Bell was out there were 40 total carries on the season that went to the backup Lev got everything you know outside of Christian McCaffrey Le'Veon Bell was pretty much the next most used guy 
And if you remember on our recent My Guys episodes, which if you haven't listened to, please go back. Uh, it was excellent. I talked about how that's, that's what the people are saying. That is it's, I mean, because the people are smart. The people. It was an excellent it, show. It was it was an awesome show. It still is. Um, but you'll remember when I was talking about Age how as well in, in 2017, an awesome Kenyon Drake was on pace for over 1,500 yards in the final nine games, and then Adam Gase brought in a 35 year old old school type of running back, Frank Gore, and he gave him 156 carries. Now you might think, well, yeah, 156 carries in. 2018. I sure, can't for even Frank Gore. believe that you weren't wrong about his age at the time. I know, right? You no. just said that, and the very first thing I did was, did Jason write down Frank Gore's current age? That's mm. what I thought you did. No, nope. Nope. no, that's he's 37 what he brought, right he now. He brought in a 35 year old Frank Gore and gave him 156 carries. Now you say, well, that's old school Frank Gore. He's he's past his prime. Last year, I don't know if you know this, he had 10 more carries. He had 166 carries last season. What? He is infinite. But the thing is. He's eternal. <laughs> yeah, he is all. He, uh, I, Adam Gase realizes now that Frank Gore's past his prime. He's old. He's busted. Well, wait. What's that? We have audio from literally yesterday. This is Adam. Let's hear what Adam Gase had to say yesterday on Frank Gore. He looks the same as he did 12 years ago. Hmm. It's, I can't explain it. It's unbelievable how, when I watch him, I, I mean, a flashback to 2008. He looks the same. I don't. I don't know how. It doesn't make sense. But Frank has been one that refuses to listen to what anybody else says, and he goes out there. He is a old school football player, and he looks good. His, his burst looks good. His vision is never going to change. He's just that's. It's going to be like that when he's sixty. And Frank is. Frank's special. I mean, there's a reason why he is third all time in rushing. Uh, That's not a guy you bring. I've in already to heard sit. that clip, and I it hit me fresh today. Yeah. I heard that yesterday. It, it's, it's he's just he's, as insane today. He's not getting 40 carries like Blau Powell got over the course of the season when Love Bell is out there. And the narrative is well, if if Love Bell has you know enough workload, just volume, he gets 1,000 on the ground, 500 through the air, he's he's going to be a, a, a top 15 back. There's just no other way. But, I mean, he didn't do it last year. He didn't even have 800 rushing yards last year. He, he, well, he was 3.2 a carry. So I just think Lev Bell is not someone I want on my roster, but I want to make this distinct point because if you look at where he's being drafted right now, he is actually being drafted – after I have him ranked in my running back rankings, I have him ranked, uh, I think, running back uh, 18 or 19 right now. He's being drafted as like the running back 21. So you say, well, how could that be a bust? Here's how that could be a bust for fantasy. Right now, he is being sandwiched in between two my guys in the draft. You can grab Cooper Cup and Tyler Lockett right where Le'Veon Bell's going. If Le'Veon Bell is the running back 20 and beats his ADP, he is not going to really help your team the way you need him to. Uh, so to me, I, I I can't imagine taking Lev Bell this year. I am concerned. <laughs> oh no! Um, the the argument I will say this: the argument for Lev Bell has been about improved efficiency, improved offensive line, improved pass catching. It's and and the touchdown totals. Other than Leonard Fournette, he was the most anomalous in mm -hmm. terms of opportunities to touchdowns. Those things can fill in the gap to maybe get back to last year or better. I'm concerned because Le'Veon Bell's posting about this. I'm I'm not concerned about a B holes press conference. First time I've ever said that. <laughs> Never said that before. I'm concerned about uh, and and the story for Frank Gore last year was he actually started the year he had he had three finishes inside the top twenty four and to start the year with uh, high volume in Buffalo he basically disappeared over the back half of the year which is something that. We've seen happen time and time and time and time again with older running backs. You fade in the second half. That could happen too. But Lev Bell's posting about this. You have this tension, this ribbon of tension in Jets camp for two years. I didn't really want him here. That's what Adam Gaze began this whole journey. Pay him more money than anybody. I didn't really want him here. Then uh, I give him all this work and he's not that good. Then it's, oh, we're just giving him a little rest. And then Lev Bell's coming out yesterday and saying, 
boy, I'm I'm twiddling my thumbs. I don't really know what I'm going to be doing. I don't know why I'm on the sideline. I'm used to vroom vrooming, you know. Did he say I'm used no, he to used vroom vrooming? He, he used emojis to show like uh, the running man uh, with a couple of uh, smoke coming behind him. He, which is what... Uh, I'm used to the vroom vroom. He but will he, get, he's not happy. He'll get the work. All he I is a talented... Do is vroom, vroom. Yeah, I moved sorry. him down. I mean, Victor I was an advocate... For him two weeks ago. Hmm. We are paying attention to camp. He's been moved down in my rankings. He's not in my top 10, not in my top 12. Uh, I still think, like I said, I made the arguments at the beginning. I think there's an opportunity, but I don't blame you one bit for putting him uh, in as your bust. All right. It, I didn't like that quote. I am going to jump in here, and this is dicey. This is dangerous. And... <sighs> I'll just I'll get it off my chest. Look, my fantasy bust. Keyword being fantasy. It's wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh. Okay, let me start let me start here. He is elite. He's <laughs> Thank you. That's how that's just that's how, how you I feel, feel anyway, right? Let this, me cover my shirt. This is how I feel having to bear my soul to the fantasy community put myself out there because this is not this is not an easy man to take a fantasy stand against he is elite he is one of the top three wide receivers in the nfl he's still gonna be good for fantasy and he's on our team and he's on my favorite team why he's being drafted as the fifth overall wide receiver off the board that's the problem for Hopkins. Over the last five years, top five wide receivers have averaged 156 targets. That's the that's the volume on average that you have to get. Now, some guys don't do that because they, they have like the huge touchdown year. Last year, Hopkins had 150 targets. He barely snuck into the top five. And in games played last year with Deshaun Watson, the quarterback who he's played with for years and years now, he was pulling in 31% of the targets while he was on the field. That was the second highest number behind only Michael Thomas. Last year, on the Arizona Cardinals, Christian Kirk had the highest target share when he was on the field. Christian Kirk came in at 24% of the targets. That is a very large gap to go from the number one guy getting 24% all the way up to 31%. Through the first five weeks... Arizona was running the actual air raid system that Cliff Kingsbury wants to run before the personnel kind of crapped out and Cliff realized he couldn't do that. But for, through the first five weeks, over 50% of the plays, four different wide receivers were on the field. Now, if you want some context for how insane that number is, through that same time period, Washington was second in using four wide receivers on the, on the field at the same time. 11%. People don't use this. This was this is why people were so excited for Cliff bringing in the air raid system. What's it going to do? How will it work out in the NFL? And elite wide receivers, we've seen them change teams a few times, and it's just been such a poor hit rate for people going all in on fantasy on someone changing teams. The offense just spreads the ball out too much for me to to truly believe and project that Hopkins will be in that 156 target King range. And Drake. Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, Dan Arnold, Andy Isabella, Hakeem Butler, Keyshawn Johnson. Right. And uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get into a whole bunch of math, but you can break down the numbers of uh, 70% of the targets went to wide receivers for Arizona, which is by far the most in the league. Uh, but still, when you break down the targets and you try to give DeAndre Hopkins the 155 or 156 targets, it leaves absolutely nothing for Larry and Christian Kirk, who are going to get targeted. Can I ask you a question? Though? Yes. Because I feel like, you know, sometimes, you know, people know we're from Arizona. They know we're Cardinal fans. Sometimes we get accused for, oh, you're calling for the right. Kyler breakout or Kyler's going to be good. That's because you're a hometown fan. I feel like we've been in a different bubble with the DeAndre Hopkins draft price. It's been in the, like, I, I don't even, we haven't been in anywhere where we're drafting him in that wide right. receiver five range. But when you make this argument, how do you see it playing out? Because he's an elite Hall of Fame caliber wide receiver. Do you see it playing out in terms of 
purely consistency issues in Arizona where Hopkins is, I don't think any of us would deny, going to have monstrous games. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm starting this argument with he is elite. He's going to be great for fantasy. But if you're drafting him as the wide receiver five, I don't think you're going to – I don't think you're going to get the, the the level of consistency that you want from the wide receiver five. I don't think you're going to get the final fantasy finish that you want when you're drafting a guy as the wide receiver five. He should still – I have him outside of my top ten in my projections, but that's like by a just a small margin of points. I expect him to be a wide receiver one, but when you draft a guy at wide receiver five and, you're, and he ends up in the 10 to 12 range, it's disappointing. Yeah, I, I have him as my wide receiver five. My projections. Yeah, you've the been way, in that camp. I think the pace of play is so much faster for Arizona and the total volume. He won't need to hit 30% of target market share in order to have targets like he's seen back in Houston. They didn't throw the ball as much as Arizona does. Uh, so I actually do think he has a good season. But I still wouldn't draft him at five because when I'm in those first two rounds and I'm looking at – I mean, I've, I've said this before. In those rounds, I am risk adverse I'm, because everybody's great. Everybody's ceiling in the first two rounds is, oh, maybe they could be the number one at their position. Um, Hopkins, maybe he could. But changing teams and all the variables that are here say that there's a, a larger percentage chance that I'm wrong on my projection than I like to have. When I, you know, take a look at invest that kind of exactly. draft capital. Yeah, he may have more of like from an impact to an offense. He may be number one in football on moving to Arizona and the impact he has on that offense. But that might not translate to fantasy. You talk about risk aversion. My bus pick, Juju Smith Schuster. Mm. He's being drafted ahead of DJ Moore. He's being drafted ahead of AJ Brown. He's being drafted ahead of Cooper Cup. He's being drafted ahead of Calvin Ridley. The metaphor that I have in my mind for Juju Smith-Schuster, you know how when they release a new television show, they like to have it be right around the biggest hit on the network at that prime time slot? Yeah, yeah. So they can pick up you like, put it right on, afterwards. It's uh, right after Friends. That was the magic slot. Look, that prime time, uh, that prime time show was Antonio Brown. That debut show was Juju Smith-Schuster, and it came on right after, and man, it had a great first season. First but, two seasons. Yeah, had a, first had two even seasons. better second even season. Even better second season. But you have now removed that 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 benefit of the doubt that and he's still riding the coattails of that number one hit. And the price that you're paying in fantasy drafts is a result of still thinking about that sophomore season that he had. And then a tendency for us to want to forgive, throw away last season in its entirety, it's hard not to. Well, it, it, you know, it's trash. And you the things you do with the trash, you, you throw it away. Yeah, the, the types of targets that they were getting in Pittsburgh from the variety of Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph, they weren't very good targets. But it's 2020, guys. We have the technology to look <laughs> at. I don't think I said that word very <laughs> clear. <laughs> technology. We've got it. We can go look and see. Was he really bad on catchable targets last year? And the answer is, yes, he was really bad. He was 58th in football in terms of catch rate on actual catchable targets when his own teammate, Deontay Johnson, was 16th in football at the exact same yards per target. These were the same types of targets, and Juju was actually worse. He, was ac he actually took a step back. I don't think you're going to get what you got in that sophomore year ever again. And one thing that I haven't brought up very much or we haven't talked about in the context of Juju is this is a contract season for Juju Smith-Schuster. There was preseason discussion already about this team's not going to extend Juju. They go out, what do they do? We say pay attention to what the team does. They go get Chase Claypool in the draft. The argument for Juju is, well, maybe that volume from the AB years goes down, but maybe the touchdowns come up. Chase Claypool is kind of a big guy. They brought in Eric Ebron, a red zone monster. Variables around Big Ben. Yes, he may be back. He may be the same Big Ben. Maybe he's not. Maybe he is, but the volume isn't there because this defense is so exceptional. They still have Deontay Johnson and James Washington and other weapons in this offense. So, again, all busts are in the context of what it costs you in the draft to mm -hmm. acquire the player. I am always shocked at where Juju is going. I have no other explanation for it. 
then it is riding the coattails of these great seasons gone by and throwing out last year. I'm not willing to do it. I want AJ. I want AJ Brown. I want DJ Moore. I want Cooper Cup. I want Calvin Ridley. So I'm not going to take Juju at in the third round. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's upsetting because I I do believe he this is. This whole ex- segment is upsetting. I know. Why do we? Uh, busts are so sad. I do no, believe no, no, Juju we, is exceptionally talented. And while there's been reports out of camp that I was going to say that's the one thing I haven't mentioned yet. Yeah, that that you know he had an exceptional camp last year and has disappeared this year. He's nowhere to be found. Maybe then we get the reverse of the season. Well, <laughs> I mean, wait, last year wait, had a great hold camp. Hold on, hold on. You just said that the key to a great season is a bad camp. Is that what I just heard? For Juju. Yeah. I, I will say the way I read into that report this morning of uh, from The Athletic saying, you know, it's hard his, to find His him. reps are limited. I think they're trying to keep their number one wide receiver from being hurt. And Do you think they re-sign him, though? Because the money that Juju will want, being the age that Juju is, it doesn't seem compatible with the Steelers' like historical philosophy on signing players. I've I mean, listened to some beat uh, reporters. Just some beats. Some beat. <laughs> uh, I've I've listened to Sorry. some uh, beat reporters talk about how they think that there is a, a a decent chance that they end up franchise tagging Juju. Okay. Yeah, I would say the it comes down to does Juju have a good year. Does he have a good year? And I fully believe that Juju Smith-Schuster can. And just a, a reminder to to last year on top of the, the quarterback problems, Juju did have uh, – he hurt his foot. And, and a it's, toe injury. It's always funny to say, well, a guy had a toe injury. But if you've ever had a toe injury and then tried to run – When did he get the toe injury, Mike? Week one. That is correct. It, so it he was hurt. Right away, then he had you know the the knee sprain and the concussion towards the end of the year. Like it was just that's what I'm saying. It was a trash year for everyone in Pittsburgh, and you're just you're crumpling it up. I'm forgetting <laughs> that it ever happened, me, and I'm moving forward. All right, I have two final questions on this uh, for you, Andy. Sure. Last year in the sleeper bowl league with Juju, did we draft Juju in the first round? To troll Juju, yes. Uh, the answer, I'm sorry, I, I missed because of all the extra words. Did we draft him in the first round? Yes. And did we win the championship? Yes. We, we but, did. Oh, man. We did. Well, I, I don't all know, I know where is the point is. The- so you heard it here first. Bad <laughs> camp, first round pick. That's what I've got from Jason. There's a reason we didn't just do bust on this show. We don't want to bring it all down yeah. to a screeching halt. We want to bring you something a little bit more upbeat. Valuable? A little bit more upbeat. Values. Our early value show, I'll make it quick, back in June. Mike, you said Deshaun Jackson. Is he still a value to you? 100%. Jason, you said Robert Woods. Is he still a value to you? 100%. He, he was almost going to be my value for this show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's always All a right. value. You want to know who's going to be a value next year? Robert Woods. Uh, I said Ronald Jones back in June. I completely believe Ronald Jones is a value, maybe even more so now. Uh, today, we're bringing you one more value pick each. I'll just get mine out of the way here. Yep. He's being drafted as the running back 56. Oh, darn. In the <laughs> so close. Late 13th round. And it's Naeem Hines yeah. of the Indianapolis Colts. You can go back. You can play Mike's audio clips on the breakout show, which I think was, what, Monday? When he talked about the value of Phillip Rivers as your quarterback, if you are a running back that can catch the football, if you're even capable, you're it, going to get. It doesn't matter if you're capable. No. The, the ball is coming your way as a running back. Because when it's almost like a, ah! Yeah. And then it, it's out of his hands towards the running back. The most check down completions in the NFL since 2017. Number one, Phillip Rivers. 124 check down uh, completions since 2017. That is what he likes to do. Uh, he likes to take what the defense gives you. Most often, the defense is going to give you some opportunities underneath. And we have all the debates and the merits of, is it going to be Marlon Mack for the first part of the year? Is it going to be Jonathan Taylor? These guys are going to split some carries. Look, regardless of who gets the first and second down work, there's going to be a ton of Naeem Hines. I truly believe it. Mm-hmm. He graded out as one of the better most efficient pass blockers at the running back position. Kind of important when you're a third down back, kind of important when you have Phillip 
rivers and his two feet in the cement. And uh, he's he's great. He's a speed demon. He's 99th percentile, 438. Um, give him the ball in wow, some was space. He really that, I don't remember he's him fast, being that man. fast. And That's he fits wild. that Philip Rivers mold. We just talked about Austin Meckler. And all the camp reports on Naeem Hines is that he is not just a little bit part of the mix. He's essential. He's essential to this team. Marlon Mack, pass catching wise, he's never done it. Jonathan Taylor, at a minimum, inexperienced in the NFL in that type of a role. Fair. I think you're going to have um, a, a, just a dynamic weapon in the backfield of Naeem Hines throughout the season. High volume situation. Sigmund Bloom came out and he, he tweeted a quote that came from The Athletic. Those watching Colts camp says it's been two straight weeks at Colts camp. Hines has been everywhere. He said he's never seen Hines more active in this offense. Maybe talk of him having 75 catches isn't that insane. That's the Austin Eckler recipe. So, and Eckler was a what, like a six round pick last year where we kind of said, okay, this could be a, a, a big year. Mike was super in on him. Credit to Mike. Saw it from the, from the uh, outset. And Hines is not going to have a lot of first and second down work. Eckler had that to open the year. You don't expect that kind of a year. But RB56, a free player at the back of your draft. Yeah. If you're in a full PPR league, he's, he's a really safe late guy that you can just watch the screen and get to go. Point. point. Yeah. So I, I really like him. I think he's a great value in drafts. He's somebody I'm going to be trying to pick up. Uh, here's a player I have been getting often in drafts. I, I find, you know, when it when it comes to the Robert Woods types, this is someone who's just undervalued. And Mike just brought him up on yes. the Fantasy Time Machine. Uh, we should talk about last it some week. more, though. But the point is, you brought him up as a Calvin Ridley uh, possible breakout. I'm saying that without that breakout happening, Michael Gallup is still a value. He is a value for where he is being drafted. Right now, he's the wide receiver 31. And last year, he was the wide receiver 22 in 14 games. So, I have a game to play. I want to play a game. Gentlemen, who had more fantasy points per game? Michael Gallup or second-year breakout Calvin Ridley? Michael Gallup? Yeah. That is correct. Okay. <laughs> Another second no, year. Hold, hold on with this game. Is this is this really a game, or is this just you're highlighting Michael Gallup had more points than all of these players that you're going to bring up? We're going to find out. That's the game. <laughs> Who had more fantasy points? Jason always wins in on his games. On a per-game basis last year, Michael Gallup, or second-year breakout wide receiver Cortland Sutton? Oh, well, let's, let's go with Michael Gallup. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. All right, let's get a little harder now. How about Michael Gallup versus DJ Chark? Who had more fantasy points per game last year? Michael Gallup. That is correct. And the final one, DJ Moore, superstar wide receiver two breakout, who also missed games. Who had more fantasy points per game? DJ Moore or Michael Gallup? It's Michael Gallup. That's, I answered before you. I don't, I don't feel good about myself when I. It's also when I play dirty this game. because DJ Moore technically played in his final game where he got knocked out on the first play. But my point it's is. It's also this. dirty because I brought this up before. Michael Gallup had a three touchdown week 17 that didn't matter for fantasy Take owners. Take week 17 out. Take week 17 out. He had two out. touchdowns on the year. Through through week 16, he was the wide receiver 30. And that was while missing two games. He's being drafted after that. My point is he's a value. And yes. the and the reason he's a value is CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb is coming in, and everybody's worried that, that Gallup's not going to be able to repeat. The truth is CeeDee Lamb could make this offense better and be a good thing for Michael Gallup. Randall Cobb is, left, and he had 83 targets as a starter. Now CeeDee Lamb comes into that role. Here are some rookies who had around 83 targets. Tyreek Hill's rookie year, 83 targets. DJ Moore's rookie year, 82 targets. A.J. Brown last year, superstar, 84 targets. Juju Smith-Schuster's great rookie year, 79 targets. Allen Robinson, 81. Or Des Bryant, the man he's kind of wearing the number right. of, had 73 targets. C.D. Lamb's going to come in and have about the same targets that left from Randall Cobb. Michael Gallup last year was the wide receiver, 22 in 14 games, and he's being drafted 
where I, I, I take him almost every time I'm on the clock where, where he's fallen to. I'm, not, I'm never reaching for Gallup. I'm not I, trying to say that he's a guaranteed top 15 wide receiver. But this is about where can you get value. And, and the last point I want to make before Andy's grimacing faces get in here is <laughs> this. When I was thinking about what type of player I want to value in fantasy football, Julian Edelman is a value. Yes, he he's is. He's being drafted way, yes, way later is. than he will finish. But the thing is, is he's not going to finish as good as he did last year. And he doesn't have this he doesn't have this ability or some some thing that could happen on the field that will take him to the next level. Whereas Michael Gallup, what I'm talking about as a as a, just a gentle value. He's going to return more than you draft him on. Nothing a gentle value? Yeah, like like he's it's just a not a breakout you see it's a it's a a breakout is harsh a gentle value value. not an aggressive value. a slight value you're going to get a quality wide receiver above 31 above 31 but that is his floor and he has ways to break out he's coming into his third year the touchdowns are the touchdowns are the most significant one yeah touchdowns go up two touchdowns in 16 weeks Uh, amari cooper gets injured again i mean there's there are so many ways where he could be much better than a gentle value okay andy did you have as a gentle value though are you willing to put (laughs) michael gallup into your lineup instantaneously is he your wide receiver two with no discomfort i will start him week one as my wide receiver two with zero discomfort all right, and the nice well, thing is because it's gentle, right? I mean, yes, exactly. Usually, you know, when things are gentle, there's no there's discomfort. a lot of comfort. Yeah. yeah. Now you said weeks one through sixteen, he was the wide receiver thirty last year. He's being drafted at thirty one while missing two games. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to bring up a quarterback here. Uh, I think he is a tremendous value quarterback at the end of drafts. Let's say you, you are playing the late round quarterback game, and other guys are just like, ah, I was going to target. Cam Newton. I was going to target these other players, and then he seems like your plan has has gone to pieces. It's just left in shambles. Fear not, my friends, because Jared Goff, the quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams, he is still there. He is a value. He is being drafted as the 19th quarterback off the board. His first two years with McVay, he averaged, this, these are his averages, over a 63% completion passer, over 4,200 yards, 30 touchdowns, and he averaged those touchdowns with a 5.8 touchdown per Jared King Jared Gurf announcing look, a 5.8 touchdown percent, which is a completely re- – it's repeatable for the Sean McVay system and Jared Goff. Last year, he still had the yards, 4,600 yards, you know, one of the – like they're throwing the ball an absolute ton, but you saw the touchdown rate drop from that average of 5.8% down to 3.5%. He only threw 22 touchdowns, and that was the difference between Jared Goff being just outside of the QB1 range and the difference between him being a weekly starter that you were very happy about. If you give him simply the league average of throwing a touchdown on every four and a half percent of your attempts that puts him at 28 touchdowns that would have been the qb6 on the year it's like that's how close jared goff was he just him playing average with with the volume the yards and the touchdown column just average he would have jumped up to the qb6 had he been able to sustain his 5.8 percent he would have jumped all the way up to the qb3 now i don't think he really could have done that the reason for the the huge volume increase was because the efficiencies did go down my point is simply you make Jared Goff average again and he's easily in the top 10 look at the weapons that are being drafted for Jared Goff he has two wide receivers being drafted in the top 20 he has a tight end being drafted in the top 10 Cam Akers is just outside the 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 top 24 at the running back position Probably by next week or so, Cam Akers is going to slip inside there. Why would you not want the the quarterback who has had the said production? Cam Akers is going to slip and slide there. <laughs> Wee! Who doesn't love a good slip and slide? <laughs> oh. uh, but the Jared Goff is being completely overlooked because he, he he burned me last year. 
He burned His you. His bad games were really bad. Last the bad year. games were really he, he bad. He turned the ball over twenty six times last year. Yes, and but the 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 actual output changing him from what he was last year to being right back in the the range of a, a weekly starter is very small. Yeah, the touchdowns are a huge deal here because if you think about how much has been said about the outlandish touchdown number that Todd Gurley had last year, the Rams had 20 rushing touchdowns last year. Right. That, uh, now without Todd Gurley, that's not happening. That's part of why Jared Goff only had 22 passing touchdowns. You can't pass a touchdown on the drive that it's rushed in and I <laughs> that's an excellent that point it's Jason. just a fact and so if if some of that regresses to the mean you're going to have more more touchdown opportunity the the one downside was that I did watch hard knocks and I saw how and now granted it was Aaron Donald but my goodness <laughs> he was just like sack sack it's funny sack, the uh sack that part was pretty funny you know I don't know if it maybe some of the interception because the interceptions went up last year to 16. I don't know if some of that was he gets a little bit shell shocked from taking a hit early in the game that concerned the pressure and he gets rid of the ball too soon. His sacks went down last year from the year before, hmm. even though that's shocking. But the interceptions went up. Still double, still double digit fumbles. <laughs> did you see they gave Aaron? <laughs> All right, Donald, we got to end the show. <laughs> did, did you see that they gave Aaron Donald a, a veteran day off? And did you see what he still got a few sacks? Did you see what no. McVeigh said about it? No, <laughs> it wasn't. I, I genuinely don't think it was to give Aaron Donald the day off. He was giving. He wanted Jared to Goff give the, the offensive off. line a break. He's like, we got to let the offensive line have a couple good days. <laughs> Comparing like, anybody else to Hulk over Aaron Donald is unfair. I, I mean, that dude yeah. is. He is. Yeah, if you a, put Aaron Donald next to Jonathan Taylor, he's a bad, bad man. It's just Aaron. Donald. No body fat at all. No. Like I don't know how you can weigh what he weighs and have no body fat, but he pulled it off. All right. That is it for values. We want to thank Pristine Auction. Yesterday, a Kenny Galladay signed jersey, mm. just $51. Mm, that's smooth. 41 if you used the sign-up code BALLERS. Oh, that's true. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS, $10 credit. That'll do it for us. We're slip sliding out of here. <laughs> I'm going downhill. Just a gentle exit. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you for supporting the show. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, Foot Clan Navy Federal Credit Union offers members great ways to lower their interest rates and save more like their low interest card, the Platinum Card. It's perfect for large purchases that you might need extra time to pay off or you can save by refinancing your auto loan to another lender. Uh, from another lender to Navy Federal. At Navy Federal, members are the mission. Visit NavyFederal.org to learn more. Insured by NCUA. Credit and collateral subject to approval. Refinance loan must be at least $5,000 to be eligible for the $200. Message and data rates may apply. Visit NavyFederal.org for more information.